For this study, we're going to take a look at the same runner running at three different speeds, namely his 200, 800 and 3000 meter race pace. Obviously, the leg cadence changes at different paces, so the clips are only in sync somewhere around the middle of the video. The most obvious difference across the speeds is in the arm action. It's vigorous at the fastest speed, with the hand almost going up to the eye line. However, at the 3000 meter pace, it's become rather lazy. At all paces, this runner does tend to let his hands flop rather more than they should do. In our next posting, we'll be looking at how different runners plant their feet differently and how distance runners tend to leave their feet behind. But you can also see this happening when the same runner runs at different speeds. So, if you watch the angle of the shin as the foot comes down to the ground, you'll notice that it's pretty much vertical on the fastest run, while the shin points forwards at the 3000 meter pace. As we'll see in our next video, getting the correct angle of the shin is an important part in, in engaging the correct muscles, but it's also interesting how the same runner changes this at different speeds. The driving knee comes through higher at faster paces, while conversely the trailing foot is left further behind at the slower paces. Also, when the near side leg drives, if you look at the motion of the hip marker against the crosshairs, you'll see a much more vigorous horizontal drive on the 200 meter run when compared with the 3000 meter pace. We'll watch a final run through, this time following the runner to the end of the zone and beyond. As he gets towards the end of the zone, watch how the angle of the shin changes as the runner first goes into cruise mode and then slows down for the end of the run. This is a good example of how the forward slant of the shin is associated with slowing down or braking.